Good evening. I think we can say that already. The truth is that I was thinking to myself when I was invited here, if I travel an hour and a half in each direction to speak 15 minutes when there's such a long list of distinguished speakers who share my opinion, why take the trouble? But everyone, of course, gives their own aspect. I can't speak about economics like uh, Joram Bartal, and I can't speak about demographics like Joram Ettinger. And so I was indeed looking for the angle where I could contribute, and I would like to speak here less about ideology and less the uh, theory and more practical aspects. I think that here we need to learn both from the left and the Arabs. We've had a problem around this matter of applying sovereignty, and I think that this is one of the most serious strategic mistakes made by the settlement in Judea and Samaria, that they didn't deal and advance this subject the way they should have over the years, and we preferred to be like Mapai and just take one step at a time, one dunam and one goat, as it were, and not deal with this fundamental issue. If we were to compare this to Mapai, this is more like the revisionist uh, aspect who spoke about state and sovereignty and so on. But that's, there's a reason why we've abandoned and neglected this subject, because of the demographic issue. We all want to apply sovereignty over all of Judea and Samaria. Wood would be very happy to do that without giving citizenship to all the Arabs living there. But because there's a problem, uh, if only a, a practical problem of how to pass such a, a law in the Knesset, and with some people it's also a need ideological or moral problem, problem too. So it, it's remained stuck and hasn't been dealt with. And this brings us to a time when we have to deal with it for many reasons. The political uh, subject is oppressive. We can't say, let's wait and see, we'll continue with the status quo, because in the meantime, other people are coming along with other programs. And where we don't advance our view, others will be advancing their views, as we saw in Gush Katif, sadly. So what do I say we need to learn from the left and the Arabs? The We need to learn from them the method of the of stages. We say it also, kima kima, gradually, one step at a time. And we have to know that just as in settlement there is kima kima, in applying sovereignty there's also one step at a time. In other words, we don't need to think only in, how to, in terms of how to do everything, but just as the Arabs and the left have known how to uh, um, damage our position and advance their position one step at a time, we need to do that too. The advantage of that, by the way, is that we can move ahead on those issues we all agree on and to postpone for a later stage those things over which there is a dispute among us. Because I'm familiar with Uri Ariel's thesis on this subject. I didn't hear him speak. I didn't get here in time. He speaks about proposing citizenship to all the Arabs. And we could argue among ourselves if we want to do that or if we don't want to do that. But when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it and argue of it. But let's do those things that there are, over which there is a consensus among us. Let's advance those things that we all agree need to be done. And that's why, even from the aspect of convincing the people and passing it in public opinion, in the media, in the Knesset, and in legislation, for that reason, too, we need to work in stages. And it's there's nothing really that new about that. It was done. It was done in East Jerusalem when it was annexed, and it was done in the Golan Heights. Our goal needs now to be to gradually annex Judea and Samaria, not all at once. The more Jews there are and the fewer Arabs there are, the easier it will be to sell it to public opinion. But we have to be careful, and every step of this kind is an achievement, but we have to be careful because the, that the short-term achievements don't harm the long-term goals. For example, there are those who say, let's apply sovereignty over the settlement blocks. They're in consensus. 
even the Palestinians, the Arabs agree that uh, the settlement blocks that that Malay al Dumim, Givat Zavev, they know this will remain ours. They want compensation, of course, within the Green Line, but they also they do understand that these areas are ours. So if we annex Al Feminashe and Malay al Dumim, it won't create such an outcry. And I wouldn't like to do that because when we are saying that there are 300,000 Jews or 350,000 Jews in Judea and Samara, we are including those places which are clear that will be ours forever, that nobody thinks to uproot. And that's not what's on the negotiating table. The moment you annex those and not others, you're saying that subject's been resolved. They're not part of our lobby anymore. They're not part of the public that is fighting over uh, the application of sovereignty. We can fold up the flags and continue with our bourgeois day-to-day -day lives like someone in Tel Aviv and Ranana. We don't want to get to that point. That's why I think the general goal at the first stage should be to apply sovereignty over all the settlement, all our settlements in Judea and Samaria and over all of Area C. Why? Because wherever there is a Jewish settlement, I wouldn't want to see next to it, as Iran Bartel said, that there be no man's land a hotbed of terror. If I live in Karnei Shamron and next to me there are some villages, Lakev and Azun and all kinds of other places like that, if we don't control those places, then terror will develop there, as is indeed happening today. Where are the stones being thrown at us today and the Molotov cocktails? from the Arab uh, villages near us. And that's why we have to be prepared to do that. Without giving them citizenship, it won't pass. But on the other hand, we need to annex as many Jews and as few Arabs. And as has, uh, I'm sure has been said before us, I'm sure that most of the Arabs won't rush so quickly to take um, Israeli identity cards or vote in the Knesset. But in all of Area C, there are only about 40 or 50 thousand Arabs, we can handle that. It's not such a serious demographic problem. So that needs to be the object objective at the first stage. But even the first objective is divided up into parts. In principle, any place where we can apply Israeli sovereignty, I would like that to be done, except for, as I said early, earlier, in the settlement box. There it's the... Uh, I wouldn't start there. I would start with places that are up for negotiations where there are places who think uh, there are people who think that they may hand it over and there it's very important to create facts on the ground so i i called my talk uh, jordan valley first and there's a good reason for that i think that to raise that flag of the jordan valley as the first place to be annexed i think that that could succeed very well for a number of reasons first of all it's important to me that that, play, that area be annexed because if I annex something that's close to the Green Line, even outside the settlement blocks, I still haven't said how far I want to get. To annex the Jordan Valley is a declaration of intent. If I've annexed the Jordan Valley, that means I want to get that far. Of course, a, in a longer uh, vision, I'd like to get to the eastern uh, bank of the Jordan too. But let's start with what's in our hands now. For the time being, what's good about the Jordan Valley is that it doesn't take me back. On the contrary, it puts me on the most eastern part that I want to reach. That's the first step. The second thing is, I think that as far as public minion is concerned, it's relatively easy, easy to convince people. For years, uh, we've been saying that the Jordan Valley needs to be Israel's eastern border. And I would, I might say, uh, uh, as I similarly said earlier, that we shouldn't annex Jordan value because it's clear that it will remain ours. But I'm sad to say that Bibi Netanyahu said that the Jordan Valley for a certain period temporarily, that the IDF needs to remain there. He didn't talk about settlement and he didn't talk about forever. And that's why the Palestinians indeed have their eyes on the Jordan Valley. And it's not at all clear what Rabin said, that that will be our security border. So it is indeed an objective 
objective that if we achieve it, we could say that we have indeed achieved something. Uh, uh, if we lost something uh, in uh, Gush Katif, then if we've uh, annexed the Jordan Valley, we've achieved something. And the third thing is in the Jordan Valley, I'm a settler, you know, I like settlers, I'm proud of settlers. The people of the Jordan Valley are not identified as settlers. And on that level, on the practical level, that makes it easier. We know that the Golan Heights were easier to get past because the people of the Golan Heights are not labeled, God forbid, as settlers. So I think on the practical level to place the Jordan Valley as our objective, I think that's practical. Uh, of course, we need to look out for opportunities in order to advance this. It needs to be put on the table. The people of the Jordan Valley waged a campaign that was successful, that the Golan Heights are an inseparable part of the state of Israel, and they were ultimately successful in passing their law. That doesn't mean that once you've passed a law, and annexed that the problems are over. As you know, unfortunately, you can hand over annexed land too. The application of Israeli law in the Jordan Heights didn't really put an end to the discussions and negotiations uh, with uh, the Syrians, but it is uh, a very important step. Once it has been uh, identified as annexed area, you need a referendum in order to hand it over, and it makes it much easier to hold on to and by the way a lot some other things can be gained you're no longer subject to the defense minister even if he's from the left he cannot prevent uh, you from building or freezing and things like that and and there are other gains to be made i say the jordan valley the overall aspiration is, first of all, areas C, including the Arabs that live nearby. And for that, we need to be prepared so that it goes through in public opinion.